video is going to try and outline the conditions at which the behaviour of a real gas deviates from what we would predict with the ideal gas model. So first of all, let's remind ourselves of the ideal gas model. There is a box, a container, uh, containing my ideal gas, and there are two key assumptions that we make about ideal gases. First of all, uh, we are assuming that particles have a negligible volume. And this means we can treat their volume as zero. The second assumption is that particles have no intermolecular forces. Uh, a third assumption that we're not interested in particularly in this video is that all collisions are elastic, so particles don't lose any kinetic energy when they bump into themselves or the edge of the container. So when we make these assumptions, it allows us to use the ideal gas equation, which can accurately predict the behaviour of those gases. In reality, however, when we are dealing with real gases, actually we can't use these assumptions, so let's have a look at what a real gas might look like. So in reality, uh, first of all, particles do have some measurable volume. As you can see in the diagram, I've drawn my circles with uh, a, a larger volume that we would be able to measure. They also have intermolecular forces, and you can see these in the diagram represented by the purple dashed lines. So fortunately for us, at most conditions, we can still use the ideal gas equation to accurately predict the behavior of a real gas. However, there are two conditions where it is less valid to use the ideal gas equation, and those are high pressure and low temperature. And those are the two conditions we now need to try and explain. So let's first of all consider um, high pressure conditions. So starting with my ideal gas again, if I want to increase the pressure in my box, one way I can do that is by decreasing the size of the box. And in this case, because my particles are still assumed to have no volume or negligible volume, you'll notice that by making the box smaller, actually they are still not taking up any significant amount of space. So for that reason, my ideal gas equation uh, is still going to be accurately predict the behavior of those particles. Now if I take a real gas and I do the same thing, I'll make the box smaller to increase the pressure. You can see that now in comparison to the first box of a real gas where they, the particles, although they have volume, they're not taking up very much volume in my container. When I make that container smaller, their volume actually now becomes significant compared to the size of the box. So if you imagine I bunched all of those particles in my small box together, I'd find they might take up perhaps 20, 30, maybe 40% of my container. So actually the assumption made in the ideal gas model of no volume actually becomes very invalid. The second thing, when I make my box smaller, you'll notice that the particles are actually all now much closer to each other than they were in the initial box. And you can see that that is going to cause more intermolecular forces uh, between those particles, represented by more purple dashed lines. So because the particle volume is now actually very significant compared to the size of my box, and there are many more intermolecular forces compared to the initial diagram, the use of the ideal gas equation is going to become invalid when dealing with these high pressure conditions. Uh, what about then if we decrease the temperature in my box? So let's start again. Uh, here's my ideal gas at some kind of medium or high temperature. And I've added some arrows here to represent the kinetic energy of those particles. And you'll see that although the arrows are not all identically sized, they're all quite big because the average kinetic energy of my particles is quite high. So if I cool that box down, making a lower temperature, what's going to happen? Well, the kinetic energy of those particles is going to decrease. So you can see the arrows are smaller, although there is still some variation between them. However, because in the ideal gas model, we're assuming there are no intermolecular forces between particles, it actually doesn't matter how fast my particles are moving there are still going to be no intermolecular forces. Now, if I compare that to my real gas uh, example and I cool that box down, 
just as we've done with the ideal gas. I now end up with a situation. Oh, let's try that again. I now end up with a situation where my particles are moving more slowly. And the key fact here with a real gas where there are intermolecular forces is that if my particles are moving more slowly, they are going to be less able to overcome those intermolecular forces, meaning the impact of intermolecular forces becomes more significant. So again, if I am trying to use my ideal gas equation to describe the particles in a real gas at low temperature, that use of the equation is going to become invalid it's going to be less accurate at predicting their behavior because suddenly at low temperature the intermolecular forces become much more significant whereas in my ideal gas actually it doesn't matter what temperature or how fast my particles are moving there are no intermolecular forces anyway so it doesn't impact my use of the ideal gas equation so there you go the two conditions that uh, cause real gases to deviate significantly from predictions made by the ideal gas model are high pressure and low temperature and hopefully you can now explain why. Hopefully this video was of some help.